All right, welcome and thank you for listening, everyone. My name is Kay Moon and I am a Twin Flame Channel and Western Astrologer. And I'm joined today by Charlotte of Happy Twins 1111, Happy Souls 1111. Welcome, Charlotte. Hello, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. So, um, for a while now, my guides have been uh, inviting me to share a transmission on ascension symptoms and ascension energies for twin flames. And <clears throat> they kind of gave me the nudge and the trigger to do a joint channeling on this with Charlotte here. Uh, so uh, I'm going to provide some context for the conversation based on the things that they've showed me. And then the two of us are going to tune in with our guides uh, support to any messages that they would like to share with the collective about uh, either twin flame ascension or twin flame ascension energy uh, symptoms that you may be experiencing as we move into 2020 and close out uh, this decade. So the first thing that they showed me in this uh, energy is that is to give context for those who may be new to the word ascension um, and what this means. Ascension is the process of the earth rising in its core vibration. There are scientists who have measured something called the Schumann resonance of the planet earth and noticing that it's been peaking and spiking in vibration uh, since 2012, the harmonic convergence of 2012, causing the Earth's vibrational frequency to get higher and higher. Part of this vibrational surge is moving the planet into a frequency uh, that is more love-filled. It is actually more filled with light. And so one of the things that is happening as the vibration of the earth is rising in frequency is that the beings on earth are also needing to adjust their frequency in order to maintain their connection to the planet. So um, there are a set of people for those of you, this is all Googleable. If you want to do research on Ascension, you can. I'm basically giving you the cliff notes and the headlines. So any of this, you can go Google it um, and learn more in the, in the realm of what you are called to sink deeper into. Please pay attention to your own intuition on this. Uh, one of the things that's happening, just as there are grid workers who are supporting the Earth's ascension, if you have been called as a grid worker, you know what that means. Those who don't, these are people who are called to certain places on the Earth's magnetic field, geomagnetic field at certain times to either plant crystals, uh, provide energy work and Reiki and assistance to Gaia in her healing and ascension process. Um, and to bring some more of that light and love energy into the planet, just as there are grid workers working with Gaia herself, there are those of us on the planet who are grid workers within the human heart field. And those are a set of light workers, just as the grid workers are working on the earth's energy. These light workers are working on helping to stabilize the human heart grid across all, all humans on planet Earth so that the human hearts have the capacity to maintain this higher frequency. These are a set of light workers, um, some of whom are twins, uh, like you who may be listening to this, like myself, like Charlotte, um, who are doing work to help stabilize the human heart grid. You may notice that you live in a big city, that you travel a lot, that you work in a position or a role where you are in contact with a lot of people, if this is you. And some of that is so that, my guides have shown me, so that that higher love vibrational frequency that you carry within you can get disseminated to as many hearts as possible on the planet uh, to help those hearts 
get the seeded transmission of higher unconditional love just by simply being in your presence, shaking your hand, looking in your eyes, receiving a hug from you, a pat on the back. The light code of this higher frequency gets disseminated through you in your interactions with other people in your day-to-day -day life. Now, the, they showed me a couple of things about this um, as we walk into 2020 that they wanted twins to be aware of because twins are part of this group of light workers, but they're not the only ones. So in the twin collective, you may notice that um, <clears throat> for some of you, you don't come into a union with your twin until much, much, much later in your life so that you can be carrying this transmission throughout uh, you know, some of your busy years, your fruitful and productive years, uh, now that you've got that activation from your twin. The two of you are carrying this transmission to as many human hearts as possible before coming together. Others of you will find that you are not a very social person or a highly visible person, but perhaps you are married to someone who is not your twin, but who is. And so you transmit that frequency to your soulmate or your marriage partner, and then that energy uh, disseminates through that partner into the world. So there are multiple ways that this frequency that you're carrying of unconditional love that got activated through the twin connection is actually getting disseminated on the planet at this time. But the one thing I think they wanted us to know, okay, now they're telling me to stop with the summary and to just hear what they're about to say. The thing that they most want people to understand is that you're not doing it wrong that whatever is playing out with your twin and however this is going at this time, holding the mental framework of fault finding, that your twin is at fault or that you are at fault for the way things are going, it dampens your ability to transmit the, tra the, transmit the frequency of love. And if you can find your way to staying in, a vib in the vibration of the purity of the love that you feel for your twin and that they're doing it right, that you're doing it right, it's just unfolding in the way that it needs to at this particular moment. And it'll unfold the way it needs to at a different moment in a different way. If you can hold that vibration, it actually accelerates the process of completing the soul mission here. So I'm gonna pause here and do a little checking in with my guides and I'm gonna invite Charlotte in because now we have, we decided we were gonna do this together to just see what messages our guides wanted to present to the Twin Collective about uh, ascension work and ascension symptoms and energies as it specifically pertains to twins. So Charlotte, I'll go ahead and let you chime on in. Sure, thank you very much. I mean, it's so beautiful and eloquent the way you describe this I really couldn't have put it better myself um I feel very much the same the the ascension symptoms that we experience as twins can be so dislocating and disabling and when we connect with our twins this idea that we begin transmitting a new frequency of love quite often without realizing this about ourselves about our energy um, and it kind of throws us into mental disarray. It's, I think most all twins can relate to this idea that when we wake up, we've met our twin, we just don't feel as balanced and stable as we may have previously done before. You know, someone that could have previously been very level-headed, very calm, very logical in their approach to life can suddenly find themselves feeling, responding and reacting to life, people and certainly their twin in ways which they haven't experienced before. And this is something that stays with us throughout the ascension period. We're constantly shifting, constantly changing and constantly experiencing waves of peculiar or unusual energy that you know can be quite difficult to ground and or identify. So 
it's definitely very common to go through periods of massive confusion and upheaval in our emotional body, our mental body, and for many in their physical bodies. So I think with this 1111 portal, that's certainly been heightened and a lot of people have been able to relate, especially to the physical symptoms more so than usual. Um, you know, this can present as headaches, aches and pains in the bodies, extreme fatigue. Um, you know, ascension symptoms are very real. But as we become more still and balanced and aligned with our purpose, our mission, the essence of our true self, we're able to begin to identify these shifts and ride those wave of, waves of change with a lot more dignity and grace. And I think this is the ongoing challenge for all of us, particularly the Divine Feminine Collective. So one of the things I've understood from my guides about the difference between the Masculine Collective and the, the Feminine is that the Masculine Collective is already very grounded. Um, their grid is connected in a way that the Divine Feminine grid isn't. And that's to say it's more geometric. It's, it's grounded in the earth in a different way. And they transmute between them and are all connected globally in the way that Divine Feminine Collective isn't. The Divine Feminine Collective is a lot more transient. And that's to say, when we talk about waves, that there is a resonance amongst Divine Feminines that draws them into a, a specific wave within that collective that they kind of flow with. It's a lot more fluid. And eventually these, these individual waves are drawn together in unity to form a much larger portion of the collective until we're all united. Um, so we can tend to experience these ascension symptoms in waves collectively. Um, and I think that's why a lot of viewers, you know, they watch a lot of readings and they notice that there are shifts within the collective, within certain waves of the collective that they are either resonating very strongly with or not resonating with at all. And this is very much indicative of the, the, the wave you are connected to and the stage you're at in your own journey. So the ascension symptoms can vary wildly, I think, across these different waves. Um, and as I said, with the masculine collective being a lot more grounded and working together as a whole, the goal of the divine feminine collective is to unite in a similar manner. So I was shown that the, the kind of leading waves within the collective that actually begin to anchor that consciousness and unity into the masculine grid. So as, as the leading members of each individual wave begin moving into and towards union energies, they begin to anchor their whole wave into that masculine grid. And it, it's, it's, it's almost like an energetic magnetism. It pulls everyone forward. Now that can be um, very hard for, for the people that are in those waves that perhaps haven't progressed in the same way, they're not in alignment, they are being pushed and pulled in a very powerful way to catch up. Um, and that, that can feel very overwhelming when your, your ascension process is actually being moved for you um, and all of these symptoms are, are coming to the surface and it you know, you can feel pretty out of control with that. So I think the key is always to work towards developing that stillness to when you're in alignment with the truth of who you are and you're able to respond to these shifts in your emotional, physical, mental and spiritual body, identify the root of them in your own personal experience, you can begin to more deeply connect with and align with the collective mission. I hope that makes sense. Does absolutely. that make sense to you? Absolutely. It absolutely makes sense. And it's, it's, it aligns with everything that I have been shown to. Um, I want to take a moment to touch on uh, something that you shared that my guides were like, go, you two go in deeper there. Okay. Um, and that is what are some of the emotional, spiritual, and physiological symptoms or issues that people can encounter uh, on both ends of that wave, both if you're on the leading edge, there are certain things that you may run into biologically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And if you are in the group that is getting a bit pulled by 
you know, the collective, what are some of the things that you may run into? Um, and then just we'll talk a little bit about how to uh, manage that symptomology so that uh, things don't swing out of control in a way that they don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone experiences the same symptoms, but it's filtered through ourselves as instruments and felt and experienced in different ways, or I guess we're translating in different ways according to our own position um, as an ascended soul. So the most common term we use to describe all of these symptoms is triggers. And most people apply the term trigger to something that their twin does to create a reaction in them, usually an emotional one. In actual fact, triggers come into, you know, come into our field across all of our bodies, spiritual, emotional, mental, physical, and they come from all angles, um, including the collective shifts. So your understanding of the, where that trigger is emanating for, from is going to be relative to your understanding of your own personal journey. And this is why um, becoming aware of who we are and why we react and respond to life the way we do all connects to this journey. We have to have the ability to be able to reach a point of stillness within us, which comes through mindfulness and meditation practice, so that we can ask from a still place what we need to understand about this shift and experience. So those that are the, the leading edge of the collective have generally done a lot more work to bring about that, that state to, you know, they've, they've learned how to be still long enough to bring forward those answers and channel from their own higher selves. The ones that are kind of on the outer edge of that wave, they don't, they're, they're going to struggle with that understanding because they've not yet connected with the truth of who they are and learned to develop that awareness of self. So really, we all have access to the same answers and information, mm -hmm. and we all have access to that awareness, but it's relative to our own growth and expansion. And of course, you know, all of the shadow aspects within us act as filters through which we receive um, information. Again, whether that be emotionally, mentally, physically, or spiritually. And the clearer your channel, the more shadow aspects of self you have released, the more clear um, that message is going to become when it's, it's coming through. But certainly, I mean, it can be, when I talk about it being overwhelming for those on the outer edge of those ways, that are perhaps being pulled forward, um, you know, into union energies that they're, they're perhaps not mentally and emotionally or physically ready for, you know, that they're, they're going to, to, to find those symptoms very intense simply because they don't know how to release, um, extract and, and work with the energies that are being presented to them. So I think, you know, the answer in all cases and for all concerned is, is to work on developing stillness. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My guides are co-signing that and they're coming in to add uh, some additional detail around this. Um, what do you guys want to say? That those who are on the outer edges, both uh, kind of leading the way on, you know, pushing their growth edges and those who feel like they're really just getting pulled into this, you know, these union energies that they may or may not ha have wanted. Um, and, and you'll know which camp you're in. The, how are they saying this? Explain it to them as this. If you have found yourself in the place of consistently not wanting this connection, trying to get off it, trying to escape it, trying to run from it, trying to cut it off, despite how, how are you using this word? Despite how manifest it already is in your heart, this would be, you would find yourself being one who is being pulled forward. Um, remind them that everyone gets pulled forward at different parts of their journey. 
that it isn't always, you're always getting pulled forward. Sometimes you're leading, other times you're getting pulled forward. For those of you on the opposite end of the spectrum, you will find that you have found yourself in a state of surrender to the connection for a very long period of time at this juncture. Um, that what you're, no, regardless of what your twin is doing, you will find that you are in a state of feeling like you choose the connection, you don't choose to get rid of it, you understand its presence and purpose in your life at this time, you've seen that purpose evolve over time, and you're in recognition of your twin having their own life that they need to live, uh, as well as you having your life, whether you are in union or not at this time, that's a union energy to be surrendered to the connection. There are different experiences that you may have. And so as the earth is ascending and the, uh, m the manifestation of unconditional love is blooming in the human heart grid, among the light workers known as twins, you may find that your body has become a very particularly sensitive instrument over the last decade. In particular, you may have found that there are certain, in the realm of food and nourishment, that there are certain foods that you are experiencing heightened sensitivity to that you previously were unaware of in the realm of, <clears throat> and if you are noticing health symptoms, how do you want me to say this? Tell them they need to look at their food, that much of what they are putting in the body is, con is acting in diametrically opposed ways to the vibration of an ascension, to the vibration of getting lighter, to the vibration of being able to maintain love. Okay, that's the first thing. That's for powerful. both groups, yeah, for both groups, they're saying here, you will experience uh, pockets of extreme fatigue. And then you will also experience pockets of extreme wakefulness. For some of you, may, you may start to question your mental health as you move through the energies uh, that are bringing the human heart grid into alignment with the earth's frequency, higher vibration, they're saying that the, the fatigue happens when a particularly strong burst of new energy becomes manifest on earth and then manifest in the human heart grid. And the sleep that you are, your body is demanding of you is so that you can integrate these energies at a cellular level. And so to the degree that you can, take yourself offline so that you can integrate this faster. You will do better to sleep for 12 to 24 hours as needed than to try and Heal the way that you think this is manifesting as a sickness with certain other external inputs. So they're showing me like medical remedies, pills, supplements, all that kind of stuff. For some of you, you just need to sleep is what they're saying. Always speak to your doctor if you feel like you're having, I got to tell them this guys, you can't just drop things like this on people. You'd speak to your doctor if you have, a, if you are concerned you have a medical ailment, obviously, but they're also showing that for the unexplained mysterious illnesses, they're saying, look at your food and also look at your sleep. Okay. Well, there's something else here. What is it you're showing me? Food, sleep, water, Okay, wow, okay. The contamination of water sources over the last decade has compromised some of the beings on Earth's ability to allow their body to rise in frequency. They're saying to the degree that you can, because your human body is made up of so much water, get the cleanest, clearest possible source of water that you can 
because this is going to help your mind. Literally, the cells in your brain, they're saying and they're showing me, align with the higher frequencies in your human heart. The heart and the brain will begin to sync up with less static. Okay, so that's the water piece. Is there anything else? They said no, but ask Charlotte. She may have things to add. Yeah, so I've just got a beautiful download as you've been speaking that just completely coincides with this in a powerful way. And it's interesting because I've received snippets of this and it's suddenly just connected. So as twins, when we wake up and we begin to ascend, we've received a light activation which immediately raises our vibration. And the analogy I'm being shown is to think about cell phones and how they operate. 20 years ago, when the first cell phone came on the market, it was like a brick, yeah? It was <laughs> huge and it needed a powerful charge. Now, you know, as, we, as we've kind of evolved and we've, we're taking in even higher vibrations, we're receiving these light activations which allow us to vibrate at much, much higher frequencies, we have to be charged. So someone who has received this light activation but isn't plugging themselves into the 5D, connecting their channel through mindfulness and meditation to receive that 5D charge is going to experience even more extreme fatigue and lethargy. And um, now when we sleep, and this is really interesting because the, the more I've got involved in this work, and certainly once it became full time, I noticed that I began to need less sleep. As a person that had been a very sleepy person, particularly in the winter, I found it fascinating that I was managing to exist, feeling pretty good on less sleep. And what my guides explained to me was that when we sleep, um, our subconscious, our higher self is plugging back into the 5D and we're getting that recharge. But when we work in the 5D and we're plugging in frequently throughout the day, we are also being charged up. So for someone that's had their lights activated, is you know, receiving all of these ascension um, light codes and so forth, that is not managing their recharge in a healthy, balanced way, they're definitely going to experience, you know, much um, more progressive fatigue and exhaustion than those that have found a way to create that recharge through their 5D activities, such as meditation. The, the, the things you discussed surrounding food and water are very clear to me also. And I remember having this conversation with my guide surrounding veganism and whether or not it was appropriate or not to, to eat meat. And their message was very clear. When we consume food, we are consuming energy. And where that food came from, how it was produced, certainly if it was of a living form, um, how it existed and was brought to our table has a dramatic impact on the vibration of what we are putting into our body. So if you are consuming water or food that has been contaminated or created in a low vibrational manner, um, you are essentially bringing that low vibrational into your body and into your field. So it certainly pays to be very cautious. And some people I've noticed when doing the, the energy healing and clearings have much more sensitive fields than others. You know, some people can drink a dramatic amount of alcohol, for example, and not be affected, whereas others will notice that their defenses are dramatically impaired and that can have an impact on physical health also. So we're all built different. But I think the, the, the really interesting thing to come out of this is how we are essentially um, you know, a high vibrational machine. We have an operating system and we need to plug in and recharge. And that's what we're called to do on this journey. Your soul is calling you to connect back to source where you can receive this charge of love. You know, there is an infinite flow of love that you can connect to. And this is what heals us. When we recognize that this love is inside of us, we stop, stop seeking it externally. And that's the whole point of this journey is to collapse that codependency template of feeding off the energy around us rather than drawing on the energy from source. Now, I think this also brings up uh, an interesting facet of the conversation where we talked about how... Um, you know, people at different ends of that um, collective wave, at the different ends of the spectrum, experience the ascension symptoms differently. And I think another um, method of determining where you're at in your journey 
boils down to accountability and responsibility. As a general rule of thumb, people that are not yet moving towards, um, shall we say, that connection to the unity of self, that stillness, they are not being responsible or accountable for the feelings and the triggers and so forth that they are experiencing within them. As an example, they may feel very justified in being angry, upset, disappointed, and all of those other unpleasant feelings that we experience and projecting that outwards. Well, if that person didn't behave this way, I wouldn't feel like that. Or, you know, if, if I can get healing from someone over there, I will feel better. And this is symptomatic of the codependency and self-love deficit we all arrive at this journey with. There's no shame in it. It's, it's how we all arrive at this journey. But there comes a point in the journey when you begin to take responsibility for self and you turn inwards for those solutions, those answers, and also begin to develop the self-awareness to judge self. Now, it's no surprise that the judgment card in tarot is also referred to as awakening. To, to ascend and awaken to your true self, you have to judge yourself. And that means developing the strength and compassion for self to look at your own wounds, your own shadows with love, and to, to start being accountable for your behaviors, your feelings. So when we are triggered, what's actually happening is you know these shadow aspects of self are being brought to the surface for release and we're either going to face it and say what's happening to me here and how can I fix this or we're going to project it and say that person has upset me or these ascension symptoms you know are driving me crazy and I can't cope with it um, essentially what we need to do is to bring it inwards and to say how can I be responsible for what is happening to me right now and how can I be accountable for finding a, a resolution and um, solution to feeling better. That's when we begin to make real progress. Yeah, 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 totally. So there's a couple of things that they want me to name as kind of normal as we move through the unconditional love energies and to recognize that they are not the final destination they are just they could perhaps be a stop on the journey and that there are everything that we just talked about meditation food water becoming self-responsible and accountable for our vibration all of those things charlotte they're saying the more we do that the less we will have some of the experiences that they're now about to point out for me. So they're saying, here's a list of some of the emotional experiences that can happen as you move into this higher vibration. Um, they're showing me, right, once you get activated in the world of unconditional love, uh, guilt can really start to come up. Shame can start to come up for ways that you feel either you've not done enough or that you have not been enough for those that you love. Um, and it's just simply because the light of love can be so blinding um, and expose so much truth about uh, the holographic nature and the holistic nature, the oneness nature of our connection to other souls. So shame and guilt, what else are you showing me? Uh-huh, okay, they're talking about insecurity. Um, what do you want me to know about insecurity as a vibration? That insecurity is a root vibration, that feeling of uncertainty of self, doubt of self, doubt of love, doubt of life. Um, doubt of possibility, that as a root vibration, that one singular vibration then spawns several other things. So the first thing they're showing me is jealousy and envy. What else does it spawn? Um, aggression, uh, like a desire to self-assert or take. It, it spawns a taking energy. And grief, okay? How does insecurity spawn grief? Right, because it's grief being a bridge emotion, they're saying it's a constant reflection on what one does not have. 
And in that bridge emotion of grief, all these other behaviors and thinking and vibrations and energies can come up. Okay. All right. What else? Um, a desire to numb. Okay. They want to talk about numbness as its own category. What do you want to say about numbness? Um, they want to say that numbness is very different than neutrality. Numbness is having been flooded with so much emotion that it's almost like the system shuts down. It, can, it can't feel any more of all of the extremes that it has felt in terms of the love, loss, or yearning, or overwhelming emotion it has felt as it ascends the, hum, the, the ladder of uh, vibration. Neutrality is a different thing. And what do you want to say about neutrality? Neutrality is the capacity to see and to feel, but not to hold or to grasp the emotion. It's the capacity to let it flow through. Okay. And so now they're talking about, they're going back to food and water, and they're saying emotions flow through when the core vibration in the body is not sticky or gummy. If they're showing me a glass of water, and that glass of water, uh, if you drop a stone in that glass of water, it sinks straight through to the bottom and keeps going if there is no bottom. That's like our energy field. However, if instead of a glass of water, what you have is like a slushy or a smoothie or a glass of slime. I know kids love to play with slime these days. If you drop a stone in one of those, that stone has a harder time sinking and moving all the way through. So keeping your physical body of water, that's mostly water, as pure as possible helps allow these emotions that come up to flow through. Um, and that's how you can find yourself in that vibration of neutrality, um, as opposed to having that rock drop in there, overwhelm the emotional and neural centers, and then numbness occurs. Um, is there anything else? Nope, they're saying tell Charlotte to, that she has something to say about this. What does Charlotte have to say? <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I'm pulling through there, you know, awakening is judgment. And when we are activated, when our lights are activated and we are woken up, we are vibrating now at a very high frequency. So anything within us that does not resonate with that high frequency is going to become very uncomfortable. All of those old, ugly emotions that we've been mm -hmm. storing and carrying, all the pain, the grief, the wounds, all of those things you spoke about, Kay, are now suddenly going to be very much not at home in this high frequency, new light body that we have been gifted. And this is why awakening is so messy and so painful because suddenly, you know, all of these aspects of self that you've been carrying and perhaps very comfortably so, suddenly need to be out. They want out and they're being brought to the surface for release. And I think a lot of the problems start for twins when they start feeling how uncomfortable and painful that is, is that they can resist that release for a long time. They're so afraid of that self-judgment, of confronting those wounds, that they can sit with it for a very long time. And that can trigger a dark night of the soul. It can be very, very uncomfortable. So I think, you know, there's another really beautiful lesson there is that a big, um, a, a big facet of, of this ascension process is that we have to be ready um, and able to allow this change within us. We have to allow ourselves to face it and confront it. You know, judgment is awakening and it's, it's a brutal process. And so for most of us, we start this journey by projecting it outwards, which we've done all our lives. That's how we've been conditioned to deal with pain. Um, and the, you know, the pain within us culminates as destructive behaviors, destructive communication patterns. Mm. And then we get this powerful light activation. Our, our vibration increases, but it cannot settle because mm. there, there, there is shadows within us that do not match that resonance. And so, 
you know, no wonder you feel out of sync and all over the place and crazy and, you know, disabled from living in, in perhaps the comfortable way that you used to. You know, a lot of people are very good at carrying their pain. They're very resilient. They could pack that stuff in their bag and keep loading it up and go about their day feeling <laughs> pretty good. And then along comes this, this powerful awakening and all of a sudden all that stuff is screaming to be released. So I think there's a beautiful lesson in there that the, the sooner you face your own judgment, the sooner you release yourself from the pain and no one can do that for you. You know, it's, it's within you and it has to be released by you. And I think a lot of twins arrive at this journey and their first instinct is to go to healers. Someone else can heal me. And all of those healers, all they're doing is helping you bring all of that shadow to the surface. Um, which can create even more pain, but you have to allow the release. And sometimes we're ready for that and it can, it can assist us in, in you know, moving those energies out of our field. But a lot of people wonder why they go to healers again and again and, and they're not seeing those benefits, but it's because it will sit at the surface until you're ready to face it and ready to release it. And I think food just you know, I know you touched on it again. I think it does tie in so powerfully because it is an, a, an aspect of self-care. Much, you know, if we think of our minds and bodies like a garden, if you're throwing trash into it, it's it's not going to have the opportunity to grow beautifully. It's not going to be nourished if you're not giving it clean water and you know the right sustenance. And you're, you're, you're allowing not just your own garbage to, to, to be dumped in all corners of it, but you're allowing other people also to, to bring you their problems, their garbage, and they're dumping it all in your garden as well. You know, eventually you're going to have a bit of a wasteland. Um, and you can get all the people you like to, to come in and clear stuff out, but you've got to take responsibility for maintaining that state and for nurturing that state or you know it's 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 going to get all muddy and uh, minging again yeah so i think a lot of this is it's it's about facing those shadows as, as they're brought to the surface you know you're you, you've been gifted this beautiful lotus flower within you that is ready to bloom but as it begins to open as that light comes in it's it's forcing those shadows out and we we have to develop that self-awareness to to face it to to face our own judgment absolutely so there's one final thing they said this is the last thing we're going to share as of right now uh okay um and you just it was something you said right so one of the th ascension symptoms is that you kind of you have that dark night of the soul piece and you go through all of those darker emotions to purge them out um, so that they no longer rest inside the heart um, so that the heart grid can kind of start to stabilize and the heart transmission can begin to stabilize one of the things that they just showed that they said is really important to understand that can help accelerate and heal the some of the symptomology, the emotional symptomology and the emotional roller coaster of ascending as a twin is um, they said once you kind of met your twin, kind of met, once you have met your twin, your heart activates in a way that pulls mind and spirit and body into alignment in a way that they have not previously been all four fully aligned, all four dimensions of you fully aligned. Um, that alignment, you know, the first, one of the first steps of, of the journey is to allow them to be fully aligned, to allow the heart, the mind, the body, and the spirit to all be moving in a singular direction. The way in which that happens is also, it happens as a mirror in our physical world they're showing and they're saying, okay, just like, stop, repeat after us. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, our outer worlds, your outer worlds must become a reflection of that internal alignment that the activation of unconditional love created for you. Where your work life, your volunteer life, your family life with your children and with your parents 
where your love life with people who may not be your twin is not a reflection of unconditional love, you will start to find those areas of life one by one or all at once begin to start to unravel so that you can begin the process of building a life that is a reflection of love, reflection of the love that you have been activated with. And so one of those symptoms, go, sorry, they're like, stop talking. We want you to understand that if life is unraveling as you're ascending and you've met your twin and you're doing this stabilization work in the human heart grid, we want you to understand that if your life is unraveling, it is only, it's not technically unraveling. What's actually happening is your life is reconfiguring into a format that mirrors the singular alignment that you received once you got activated with unconditional love. And that is the last thing they wanted to share. Anything else, Charlotte? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the metaphor of a garden is a powerful one. Yeah, um, I agree. Because when we look at our inner wounds as well, and this includes people, circumstances, all the things you describe that can be out of alignment with how we're feeling inside and the unconditional love and that, that state that we are cultivating within us. I mean, I experienced that tower moment of you described where I, I achieved this state from within and everything without began to collapse around me, began to unravel. Um, and it's a painful process to go through. Um, so that, that I think that that's key to, to recognize that sometimes we feel like we've been blessed with this beautiful, abundant feeling of joy within us. And then the universe seems to kick our ass and start dismantling everything without. And it, it's, it's useful to understand that that is a very natural part of the process. But when it comes to sort of taking care of your garden, you have to remember that what you nurture grows. And if you imagine a, a variety of plants within your garden, some you have put there intentionally because you liked them. Some you may change your mind when they become rampant and out of control and you have to start weeding them out. Mm -hmm. Others um, should never have been there in the first place and have, have taken up residence through no fault of our own. This could be grief, trauma, experiences that come into our zone of awareness that we generally could, you know, had no control over. Now, when it comes to healing, we often approach it by dealing with a little bit at a time. But if you assume that every wound within you like, is a single plant, it has a deep root system. Now, you can work from the top down, starting to trim off the layers, spraying it with weed killer, picking out the roots one by one. But the most powerful way is to dig it out. When you pull it out from bottom and you work from bottom up and you pull that root out healing is actually rapid fire so you know a lot of people say to me well how how do i heal how do i face these wounds when you work in meditation you are tapping into your higher self when you go into that light or deep trance state you are tapping into your deep inner knowing and when you ask of your mind take me to the root of, of this pain and you, you acknowledge and intend that you are ready to release it, you're pulling that whole plant out at once. And this is why meditation provides that rapid fire healing if you are setting the right intention. So you want to approach your garden from the perspective of, you know, what do I not want in my life? What feelings exist? What circumstances exist that do not serve me? And rather than trying to dismantle them piece by piece, I'm just going to instruct my mind to take me to the root, to the, the, the depth of this wound and to drag it out bottom up so that I'm pulling it out all at once. If you're doing that regularly, the healing waves that you experience are going to be much more gentle than you know pulling it out piece by piece and really longing out that process. I mean, it can feel it can feel quite um, what's the word? 
I guess, like a dramatic upheaval initially. But when I started healing in this way of going to the wounds at the root, at the core, um, I would experience immense pain followed by immense joy in the space of a few short hours. And I became quite addicted to this process because you kind of learn to enjoy the pain and to really revel in it <laughs> as it's released because as it comes out you just know that it's going to be followed followed by this wave of lightness because you've just torn so much out at the root at once so i, I really recommend that when you're working on your inner healing you're working on your inner wounds you know you're confronting these things it's it's easy to think right i'm going to start with forgiveness and i'm going to look at you know communication i'm going to think about how i um express myself or why i can't speak up in crowds or all of these you know small facets of self that actually all add up to one big thing that will have a root that you can just direct yourself to the root of it you don't have to analyze every little um nerve ending that comes off that root system you don't have to look at what every individual petal of, of, of that plant you can just drag it out of the root and bin it and burn it and purge it and get rid of it and you know experience that lightness so I think that was the, the last thing I wanted to share is it, it was a really useful one for me and I know that when my healing became more intentional using that method of intending to go to the root not to pick apart the individual pieces of self but to, to face the root which your subconscious mind knows it knows when you go into meditation it knows why you're there it knows what you want you just have to direct it accordingly and it will it will help you um, achieve exactly what you're asking beautiful thank you i love thank that you. um all right well we'll stop here um if you'd like to find us we'll give you a little bit of intel here i channel for the collective i don't do personal channelings i do offer uh astrological readings for you for your twin i read something called a union chart which is the day time and location the two of you came into a singular energy on planet earth when you met um and while the stars can influence us they do not control us and so whether or not you know you and your twin will come together i can tell you about right timings and what you're here to learn at this time what's coming up next time what why certain things went the way they went um, but whether or not you two come together will ultimately be up to you is what i've been shown i know that that doesn't resonate for all twin flames so to your own intuition be true if you'd like to find me, you can email me at chrysalismoon at gmail.com, K-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S-M-O-O-N at gmail.com, uh, and we can schedule a 2020 reading for you and your twin. Uh, Charlotte offers a lot more than just uh, <laughs> than just astrology. You don't even do astrology, but you do something else, many amazing things. Why don't you tell them about that? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I read tarot. I am going to be trimming down the number of readings I offer from 2020 um, so that I can focus more on teaching. I've kind of understood that the messages I'm bringing forward are powerful to the individual but as one person I can only reach so many so my goal is to to help as many people move into the similar zone of awareness so that they too can begin translating these beautiful messages for the collective and, and working with more people independently so I'm going to be very focused on teaching next year so I do offer a lot of classes at the moment you can find them on my website which is happysouls1111.com can book a reading with me there but i also offer spirit release therapy which is um really really important to me for the twin flame community because staying clear energetically is a challenge as twins we we shine a lot of light we have a beautiful mission and th this opposes the the darker intentions of the lower vibrational entities and people that exist in society and other dimensions so a uh, spirit release therapy allows you to to be cleared of anything that is attached that doesn't serve you and that's that's a service i offer that's really close to me i also teach that i teach mediumship and tarot so there's a whole bunch of stuff that can help but i'm i'm all about giving someone a fishing rod 
um, mm. <laughs> rather than the fish. So, you know, my a lot of my work is very much focused on guiding you towards realizing your own truth and you're connecting with your own power and intuition so that you can begin to heal self it's much more empowering than having someone do the job for you so that's what i'm all about because certainly vouch for your services kay i'm a regular client as you know <laughs> i love astrology i think it's so beautiful to see what's written in the stars you know and actually i think we all have a destined path and my guides explained to me explained it to me like this if you imagine planning a round the world trip, you know, you're off for two years, so you're visiting 80 different countries, you've got an itinerary, you know where you're heading, you know where you're staying, what flights you're taking, but in the space of those two years, it's never going to go to plan. You're going to miss flights, there's going to be delays, you're going to arrive at some places you don't like, you're going to meet people that are going to draw you in different directions, and we always have free will. And I think that's what's so powerful about astrology, it can show us what's intended what our destined path looks like but ultimately as you said you know how we navigate that that destined plan that that route that we've laid out for ourselves before arriving here as human beings is entirely down to us and that's very empowering as well i think absolutely and i will vouch for this srt and hang on i have two questions for you well i have one thing to share and then one piece to um ask you so i've done the spirit release therapy now i wasn't a believer at first and i'll be <laughs> honest about that i was like no nobody can curse me that if i don't give them the power then they can't blah 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 and after the day like the day the day <laughs> you did the srt for me it was like fireworks in my world got set off like my vibration shifted permanently I used to have doubt attacks like I had panic attacks mm -hmm. I have not had one of those since you and I did that session mm -hmm. um, and the doubt attacks would take me down for like two or three days of feeling like oh it'll never work with me and my twin this is awful I, I'm like they would just come like two or three days of just severely doubting the connection the journey its path where it's going I have not had one since you and I did SRT That's and it has been amazing. Feedback. The second thing that happened, um, cause I did the SRT for two, um, there's been like some communication blockages between my twin and I, where I just wasn't, I didn't understand what was going on and he was not revealing or telling that same day he reached out and he was like I just want to acknowledge that I may have been a little distant there's a lot going on um, and he just kind of owned up to the fact that of like the ways in which he was creating a break in the connection yeah and I, I just I couldn't believe I was like Charlotte did you do that <laughs> <laughs> well I didn't do it really what, what happens is when we have attachments curse energy entities anything in our field that's sticking there that shouldn't be there it's a block and i always use this analogy if you when you watch a medium perform you know you get these evidential mediums that bring forward messages from loved ones that have passed on and you'll notice that they say things like oh i'm getting a pain in my heart and this person died of a heart attack or and they're sending me this feeling of massive pride and or they're angry with you you did something i'm getting these feelings of rage or they're showing me this place where you lived or this this place where you work and what they're actually demonstrating is that spirit can manipulate your physical body your emotional body your mental body so if you've got a spiritual entity or cursed energy attached to you it can interfere with all of your cognitive abilities it can interfere with your physicality it can interfere with your emotional and mental body and this can create unwanted behaviors and blockages in your system that don't serve you so when we clear a person what we're essentially doing is restoring them back to their own divine blueprint of well-being so that they can once again you know have everything flowing clearly and we call it sovereignty they are now in full possession of their soul without interference so it's not unusual to have such dramatic feedback and particularly in the twin connection 
And this is why I'm, I'm so passionate about bringing this service to the Twin Flame community because we get attacked more than your average human being. We're practicing spiritual work, we're shining a lot of light and the, the masculine twin is always significantly more vulnerable because they don't have the awareness of grounding protection and all of the, the kind of spiritual stuff. But you were right in saying that if you decide you can't be cursed, you can't be. That's actually our best protection is our strength of will. Free will is our superpower as human beings. So if you decide I'm safe, I'm protected, so it is. So once I cleared all of that doubt that existed within you, you were able to hold on to your true intention without interference. But with something there interfering with it, you're, you're fighting a constant battle. It's mm -hmm. like having an elastic band around your waist. You're trying to move forward. You know what you want to do, but there's something holding you back and pulling you back. So a, a clearing can really help you reconnect with, you know, the, the truth of who you are and fulfill your true intentions. I, I, you know, the symptoms of that, if you, if you have strong intentions, but constantly feel blocked, or uh, you know unusual obstacles within your system that don't allow you to communicate your truth. Chances are there's some kind of interference there. Amazing, yeah. I'm glad I was you enjoyed really it. Really blown away. Really blown away. Um, and there have been other you know many miracles since um, that I'll you know I'll keep to myself. But I did want to share that um, for those who are like me. You know, you kind of like eh, I don't believe it. <laughs> believe it um because yeah. what my guides really showed me is that those kind of the most a lot of that there's it's most human beings on planet earth are good people <laughs> huh. but there can be you know whipples ripples or waves of uh you know like bad days negative moods that can then begin to calcify and gain momentum and become thought forms that solidify as entities and mm. if there is a like thought form in you it can come sit with you you can yes. catch it and it can just sit there so that's one of the things we clear is self-created thought forms which is part of your conditioning you know these are messages that you've heard externally you've taken them in and your own inner dialogue has accepted them, repeated them. So you might have thoughts about yourself, I'm not good enough, or, you know, I'm never going to be successful. And we, we clear those. Um, yeah. We also look at disassociated subpersonalities, which is trauma that we've experienced, which has created, um, it's a bit like how the sh shamanic practitioners describe as soul fragmentation and soul retrieval. You know, when we experience trauma, quite often we will disassociate from it because it, it makes it easier for us to move forward with our life and not remember it. But that actually creates that fragmented soul. So all of those treatments that are included in a clearing, you know, we, we literally look at every aspect of your body, um, including the, the, your, your soul's timelines, both in this life and others, to pull everything back into balance. So it, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. We do have beautiful feedback from SRT. Yeah. It's really lovely, lovely modality. Uh, an outstanding piece of work. So then I have this question for you because there are people who come to me to get astrology readings from you, but they're part of a group. What group is this that they're coming from? Because they're all so high vibrational. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely. So my students, when, when someone does a class with me, they are, you know, it's, it's usually a five or six week course that I offer. But thereafter, the support is ongoing and I hold regular circle time for my students and they all work together. So there's quite a community there now of people that have done my classes, they've come together and we continue working together. So, you know, it might be a five week class, but I'm committed to supporting you on your journey and I'm supporting that community. So it's a very tight knit group. Um, I'm absolutely honored and privileged to be a part of it and to hear that kind of feedback that you're, you know, identifying how high vibe they are is just beautiful. We're actually bringing them all together next year for a retreat. I'm about to announce a second retreat that's open to anybody that would like to come and work with us and heal with us. But I do think there's such immense power in working together as a collective. I'm really um, solid in my intention that we rise by lifting one another so that that focused face-to-face -face working together to heal one another to develop our psychic abilities together and to support one another is so empowering 
and um, so uplifting. So that's why you're seeing so many of these happy souls that are <laughs> part of this beautiful student community um, coming your way. So that's really lovely feedback. Thank you. Yeah, they're outstanding. I have been, everyone I've met through you has been uh, surrendered, I guess you could say. Like they're, yeah. they're, they're no longer in angst yeah. about their twin flame journey. And that, I mean, that's a testament, again, to the vibration that you're carrying and the transmission that comes through anything you do. Oh, thank so, you. Thank you. It's been a total pleasure. It has. Thank you so much for inviting me to do this. It's been an absolute joy, and I really hope that it reaches lots of people that find some comfort and understanding in it. Agreed. All right. Thank you for listening, everyone who got to the end. Uh, we'll link uh, how you can find both of us beneath this video. Take great care. Lots of love. Bye.